Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, we are coming this morning in the presence of the Lord. Lord, Father God, we just invite you to come in and to sup with us. Oh, it's in the name of Jesus, the name that we love to call on, that name that saved our souls. Amen. Oh, we bless the name of the Lord this morning. And I want you to just join with me in these announcements. Amen. Resurrection Sunday. Every Saturday from 11 to 11.45 a.m., uh, Sister Carla Williamson will be offering uh, low-impact uh, fitness class in the fellowship hall. Second class clothing store is open again Monday through Friday, 11 to 1 p.m. They need clothing, especially children, women's, and men's. Uh, you can contact Brother J.C. Burkeen or Sister Regina Gibson for more information. Tuesday, April 11th, prayer service and Bible study will resume at noon and 6 p.m. This coming Friday and Saturday, next week, will be uh, April the 14th and 15th, the Second Episcopal District Spring Conference at Brown Memorial CME Church in Louisville, Kentucky. Saturday, April the 15th, will be the Sunday School Convention Phase 1 meeting at noon, from noon to 2 p.m., Early voting is from April the 4th through May the 1st. Uh, Sunday, April 19th is a celebration. It's a holiday. It's Pastor Lester's birthday. Amen. Amen. Sunday, April 23rd and 30th, souls to the polls. Please vote. Pastor says if you don't vote, don't complain. Spring rally, save the date, April 23rd through May, May 14th. Uh, and the theme is our season of sacrifice. Saturday, April the 29th. Now, that's another holiday. Where is Sister Faye at? That's her birthday. That's my anniversary. Uh, international, intentional boldness. Let's do it again. CDI Sunday School Convention in Dayton, Ohio. Sunday, April the 30th uh, is the annual Missionary Day. Dr. Jacqueline Scott in the, um, of the International Press will be our speaker. Also, the Guardian Angels are looking for more members to help with the security of the church. Please contact Brother Bill Russell. Mother's Day photos. Please send photos of your mother for Phillips Temple Mother Day celebration to, well, it's in here, pictures, SP, pictures, PTC at gmail.com. Uh, whether your mom is still with us or has passed away, please uh, submit your pictures so that they can be celebrated for Mother's Day. And then uh, the church audio video equipment upgrades. Please pray about sacrificial giving, giving to support the effort. And um, congratulations. Oh, I'm not going to. That's none of my business right there. That's pastor's business. He's going to announce that. Thank you to all who have helped to make our Lenten season a great success. Pastor says he honors and appreciates. Didn't we have a good time on Thankful Thursdays? Didn't we have some good times getting together, fellowshipping? And, 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 and Friday was phenomenal, the, the seven last words, all the different speakers throughout the week. So we just thank the Lord for that. And now I want to welcome any visitor to Phillips Temple, anyone that's visiting in the house this morning with us. Any visitors scared to get up? Amen. Amen. Well, on behalf of our pastor and our congregation, we welcome you to this church, uh, to Phillips Temple. And we uh, ask you to just enjoy yourself, clap your hands, stomp your feet, enjoy the spirit of the Lord. If you don't have a church home, we love to welcome you into God's house, into my father's house. And so we just thank God for your presence today because we know you could have went somewhere else. Amen. Thank you. All right, and so now we're going to have prayer by Reverend Quatanya Rogers. He's going to lead us in prayer. Good morning, church. Good morning. The altar is open if you would like to come to the altar. You can let worshipers enter. They may want to come to the altar.
can still come to the altars we want. With bowed down heads and humbled hearts. Most precious Heavenly Father, we come to you on this day, Resurrection Sunday. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for loving us so much that you chose to stay on the cross. Lord God, you stayed on a cross for three days, but you chose, God, to get up on that third day. Lord God, we thank you for loving us so much that you decided to come up out of the grave. Lord God, we thank you for loving us so much that you paid the price that we may live again. Lord God, that you became our healer. You became our doctor. You became our lawyer. Lord God, you became our all in all. Lord God, we thank you because we know you are our comforter. This morning, God, we know that some have lost loved ones, Lord God. And we ask that you be with them this morning. Be the comforter that they need. Lord God, we ask that you just remind each and every one of us, Lord God, that you can be there when the midnight hour, that you can reach over from glory and just touch us, Lord God. It was not that alarm clock that woke us up this morning, Lord God. It was grace and mercy. And so, Lord God, we just say thank you. Lord God, we thank you for going into the operating room, Lord God, before the doctors ever got there, Lord God. And you were our healer. Lord God, we thank you for going into the courtroom before the bailiff ever got there, Lord God, before the judge ever got there, Lord God. And you were there, Lord God, because the prison doors opened and you let some children come home, Lord God. You wiped away the tears from some mother's eyes, Lord God, and we say thank you. Lord God, we ask you to come into Philip's temple right now, Lord God, and every church that's open in your name, Lord God. And we just ask that you meet us at our needs. Lord God, there's some who didn't come to the altar, but Lord God, we still ask that you meet each and every one of us, Lord God. Lord God, there's some of us that said, Lord, it's me standing in the need of prayer. Lord God, some need a financial blessing this morning. Some need a healing blessing this morning. But, Lord God, some need a marriage healing right now. But, Lord, whatever it is, we know you are God that can take care of everything. Lord God, we ask that you just be in the midst of it all. Lord God, we ask that you touch our pastor. Lord, we ask that you cover him from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. Lord God, when he gets weak, Lord God, we ask that you cover him, Lord God, because he will get tired in well-doing. Lord God, we ask that you watch over our elder and our bishop. Lord God, we ask that you watch over the ministerial staff. Lord God, teach us what to do to walk outside these four walls, Lord God, that we're not just ministers inside this temple. Lord God, teach us what to say and what not to say. Teach us how to pray. Teach us how to preach. Teach us to do what you tell us to do. And Lord God, teach us when to be quiet. And Lord God, when it's all said and done, we will always give you honor. We will always give you praise. And we will always give you glory. And those who believe in Christ will say amen. Please stand with me as we recite the Apostles' Creed.
fill this temple in whom do we believe? Amen. Please remain standing for our morning hymn, after which Reverend Otto Penn will lead us in scripture. Let the church say amen. amen. It's Resurrection Sunday. Because he lives, we can face all of our tomorrows. Because he lives, we know all fear is gone. Hymn number 106, Because He Lives. Jesus. They call him Jesus. He bled. Life's final. No war with. And then as death give way to victory. And then. Pick it up, pick it up. Gives way to victory. I'll see the life of glory. And I know. Come on, because he lives, because he lives, because he lives, I can face, I can face tomorrow, because he lives, all fear is gone, all fear is gone, because I know, because I know. Because he lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear, all fear is gone. Because I know. Because he lives. 
give God praise today. Hallelujah. Amen. Now it's my turn. Amen. <laughs> it's time for the word of God to say the word of God is the power of God unto our salvation. Amen. Thank be to Jesus. For he is the word that has brought forward life and life eternal. Mark chapter 16, beginning at verse 1 through 8, it reads, When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. And when, uh, but when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. They entered the tomb. They saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the woman went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Amen. Lord, add a blessing to the reading and hearing and obeying of his holy word. Amen. Let the church of God say amen, amen. and give glory and hallelujah to Christ Jesus has risen. Amen.
Somebody say he's worthy to be praised. Thank you, choir, for reminding us of that, that God is truly worthy to be praised. Happy Resurrection Sunday morning to all as we're here today to give God praise. Come on, let's put those hands together and give him praise. For God is truly worthy of all of our praise. Let me say a special thank you to uh, Sister Faith Godwin and for Sister Linda Binger for our Sunday school bowl this morning. Did an outstanding job with our young people and our adults. A uh, special thank you to uh, Sister Lily Evans and Sister Tanya Plummer for an awesome play on yesterday. Amen. And for all of those who participated, I want to say thank you so very much. It was a great, great endeavor as we worship God through the arts. Also, a special thank you to all of those who contributed, those who worked uh, this past Lenten season, each Thursday night for all of the ministries that gave in terms of uh, preparing dinners and for our workout and for our exercise of all that we did. I am thankful and grateful that God has blessed us throughout this Lent season. Amen. Amen. And today marks the end of our Lent season. So some of us can go back to eating prayerfully. Uh, we'll, we'll do it more modestly, but we're thankful and grateful. And uh, come on, uh, Sister Kimberly Walker to come and give us our results. Uh, for our biggest loser, amen, and those who started on February the 22nd uh, as we started our Ash Wednesday. But uh, congratulations that we have lost as a congregation. I believe it was 39 who started. How many finished it? So it was 39 that started. We had about 20, 25 that did the, the final way in. But collectively, if you see in your bulletin, we've lost 101 pounds, Amen. <laughs> And 24.5 inches. So thank you, Phillips Temple, for your commitment uh, that we know that this is only the beginning. Amen. But now that lid is over, now we got to maintain it. Amen. So we are thankful and grateful. So at this time, I want to call now with Sister Kimberly Walker, who did an outstanding job leading the effort to make sure that we had persons who uh, led us in exercise and also the ministries that fed on every Thursday. So let's give God praise now for Sister Kimberly Walker as she comes. Good morning, Phillips Temple. I am so uh, thankful for what we are doing, what we have done, and what we are going to do. And um, whew, I'm going to ask Sister Rochelle to stand up. And I, normally I don't do this. And Sister Carla to stand up. Sister Diana to stand up, all right. and all of those who was his sister Ruth to stand up, Brother Ronnie to stand up, and if I'm missing anyone, stand up if you participated and assisted with the workouts and assisted with the meals. Yeah. We thank all of you because we could not have done it by ourselves. Yeah. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And what I will do now is reveal the two biggest losers. <laughs> and all of us are winners. All of us are winners. Just having the awareness of your health is a win. So thank you for everyone who participated. And now, drum roll, please. <laughs> the biggest loser, male. And I won't reveal how much was lost or how many inches were lost, but the biggest loser male is Brother Jeffrey Gaither. <laughs> and, and someone was nipping at his ankles, so. <laughs> and I will say our Pastor Lester was right there, right there. So congratulations to our pastor as well. And the biggest loser, female, is, drum roll please, and we had several who were nipping at the ankles of the winner. And that is Sister Danielle Lynch. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, don't clutch your pearls, don't clutch your pearls. <laughs> 
but everyone did an awesome job and we look forward to continuing some things so in the near future we will put a plan together so that we can keep this momentum going and our pastor really really wants us to keep it going so we'll see how that goes in the near future and for the winners they will both receive a hundred dollar gift card thank you so much Come on, let's give it up for Judge Gaither and for Sister Lynch, amen, for your hard work at making it all possible. And uh, we're thankful and grateful for that. We rec recognize that health is wealth, amen. As long as we take care of our bodies, we take care of our temples, uh, and we're thankful. I think uh, April is um, Stress Awareness Month. Uh, that we need to be aware of our stress and stressors, amen? That we have to learn how to give our stress stress, that we don't let anything stress us out. But also, as I was uh, looking, uh, April is also Autism Awareness Month, too, that we're praying for those who, are, who have loved ones and those who, are, uh, have, who have to deal with autism. Uh, it is just another way in which people live, amen? <laughs> But we pray for those who have autism and the families of those who have loved ones with autism. Uh, God loves everyone. Amen. And so we are praying for all of those families. As we prepare now, it is our time of giving. We ask that you prepare now to give. The Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver. And here we are on this Resurrection Sunday. God has given so much to us. God has given us this beautiful, sunshiny day that the Lord has kept us in spite of us. And so we would now uh, ask that you would all please stand as we go to the word of God where it teaches us how and why we are to give uh, from our tithe litany that we recognize that God loves cheerful givers. And it reads, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all of thine increase. on the first day of the week today. Let everyone lay by and store as God has prospered them. Will a person rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, and where have we robbed thee? In tithes and offering. Together, bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now here what says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Amen. As our ushers prepare to come, and as we're coming, we also uh, remind persons that you can give electronically on Cash App. It's the dollar symbol, uh, Phillips Temple Indy. Also on Giblify, you can find us at Phillips Temple Indianapolis. Cash App, the dollar symbol, Phillips Temple Indy, also on Giblify at Phillips Temple Indianapolis. We are so very thankful and grateful for all of those who continue to give and support our worthwhile ministry. We thank God, amen, and for our ushers, we thank God for them as they are leading us now in our worship and giving. I would that the outer aisles, the two outer aisles, that they would please stand as we are following direction of our ushers and coming down the walls, we ask that you would prepare now to come to give and worship God through our giving.
Yes, he does.
thankful and so very, very grateful for who God is in all of our lives. The Bible says it's in him that we live, move, and have our being. Without him, we would fail. We would be like a ship without a sail, without the power of God. Let us pray. God, we thank you that even on this resurrection morning, we give you praise for the greatest gift, the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And today, God, as we celebrate you, God, raising him from the dead, we give you praise. For God, we acknowledge that, Lord, we could not make it without you. For God, for you are the one. You, oh God, are the source of our strength. You, God, know every hair that's on our head. You know, God, our uprising and our down sitting. God, you know our thoughts from afar off. So we say thank you. So now, God, as we prepare now to go into your word, speak now, God, to our hearts, to our minds. But most of all, God, speak to our souls. God, we desire now, Lord, to worship you in spirit and in truth. God, remove anything that's not like you. But God, keep our hearts and minds turned to you. And God, we ask that you will forgive us for all of our sins and all of our shortcomings and renew, God, that right spirit within us all. For God, we truly desire to worship and honor you. Now, God, I pray, Lord, that you would decrease me and increase me Bear not all iniquities, Lord, until there's nothing left, Lord, but thee. And God, we'll be careful and we'll be mindful to continue to give your name the praise. We ask it all, God, in the name that's above every name. The name, oh God, that's above our fears and our frustrations. The name, oh God, that's above cancer and high blood pressure. The name, oh God, that's above HIV and AIDS. The name, oh God. The name, oh God, that's above sexism and racism and classism. We thank you now, God, in the name that every knee must bow and every tongue must confess. We thank you now in the strong and powerful name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. From the book of Mark, chapter 16 which was read earlier, verses 1 through 8. And I would like to just pick up here again and read real quickly <clears throat> the verses from Mark chapter 16. I want to look just real quick at how our brick could be verses uh, 3 through 7, and there you'll find these words. And they ask each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alone. Don't be alarmed, he said. You're looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. But go tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Amen. I'd like to preach to you for a little while from this subject entitled, I've Got Good News from the Cemetery. I've Got Good News from the Cemetery. You know, this 2023 Holy Week has been one like I have never witnessed before. A former president was indicted. The LSU ladies basketball team won. First lady of the country thought it would be fitting to have both teams come to the White House. 
Justice Clarence Thomas is now being investigated because of the undue influence of a rich billionaire who flies him around while dealing with the case that's coming before the Supreme Court. Uh, in Chicago, they got a new young black mayor, and then in Wisconsin, they shift the uh, political pole into a more progressive favor. And then in Tennessee, uh, two young men, both named Justice, uh, Justin, just in time and just in case, that they were there fighting for the rights of persons who've been annihilated through gun violence. I find it amazing that many of those uh, in Tennessee, uh, Tennessee, which has a rich history, uh, Tennessee was carved out of North Carolina for North Carolina used to run from the Atlantic Ocean until, un, back onto the Mississippi River. But it was in the 1700s when they began to volunteer to help them during the American Revolution that they kept the state from being taken over from the British and they cut the state in half and they gave the other half to those who volunteered and they called it Tennessee. As a result of that, the cost of that hard work, there were many in the state who were ravished over whether or not to support slavery or support the Union. It, Tennessee is one of the only few states that went both ways. In part, it was for the Union. Part was for the Confederacy. But all of all that hard work and, uh, of our ancestors being free, it was in Tennessee where the Ku Klux Klan got its start in a little town called Pulaski, Tennessee. So Tennessee has a very dark history in terms of our people. Even, and I know nobody here knows this, but there's a thing called Jack Daniels. I know none of you never heard of Jack Daniels, but Jack Daniels is something that some people drink that they use that for, uh, for whatever reason they use it for. But Jack Daniels made, their family made millions of dollars off of it, only to find out there was a man, a black man by the name of Nathan Green, they called him Uncle Nearest, who discovered this, but they took it from him and made millions of dollars. So Tennessee's got a bad history when it comes to our people. Isn't it amazing that even this past week that they could vote and expel the only two young black representatives, but yet the white woman was allowed to stay. I, I tell you, it's been a crazy week this week, but yet I still know I've got good news from the cemetery, that, that I know when situations look dark and situations look bleak, always know that God is working on our behalf. See, in light of even the blatant disregard of that First Amendment in the state of Tennessee, that we all have the right to free speech. And even though what the two young men and a young lady did in Tennessee, it only disrupted the, the decorum of the house. And every now and then, God sends people our way to disrupt things because many times we become comfortable in the things that are wrong. God sends prophets and priests to disrupt us, to remind us that God has called for us to do mighty and great things. Now, when we join here in our text, the, the Sabbath day was over, and there's something that God does here in the 16th chapter of Mark that, that no one else had ever done, that had ever written about, that it was women who were the first to carry the gospel to the world. That's why I always encourage my sisters and brothers of those who say that women aren't called to preach. Well, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible shows us here that it was three women who dared to go to the tomb and come back with the good news from the cemetery that Jesus is alive. So here's the thing for us to recognize that it was these three ladies who were bold enough, brave enough to go to the grave to recognize that Jesus Christ was and is our Savior. The Sabbath day was over here in our text, and it was the Jewish custom to come and anoint the body of a loved one to offset the stench of a decaying body. It was early in the morning that these ladies come to the cemetery to come to anoint the body of Jesus. They got up early to come to anoint, not knowing who would roll the stone away from the tomb. 
but yet they came ready to deal with the stench of a decaying body, but they also came with the authority to say that they were going to do exactly what they had set out to do. Mary Magdalene was there to assist in the ritual, also was there to show her appreciation that Jesus had delivered her from seven demons that had invaded her body. Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary, Jesus' mother, was also there. All of these ladies came to try and cover up the smell that would come from a decayed, decayed Jesus' dead body. However, when they come, they find out something else had taken place. And the first point I want us to remember about good news from the cemetery is simply this. You've got to keep on going through Although you may not have the muscles, but you've got to have a mission, and with a mission, you can move anything. You may not have the strength of muscles, but if you have the mindset that you set out to reach your mission, it can move anything. Much like the LSU ladies basketball team, they were number nine but they had the mission to become the champions. These ladies here in our text woke up early in the morning, headed to the cemetery, thinking that the tomb would be sealed by the Roman government. Pilate's seal would have been there on the door, and it probably could have read no trespassing, but they did not let that stop them from doing what God had called them to do. See, your life may be chaotic right now, and you may be, you may be going through many things in your life, but you always got to keep a mission on your mind to do what God has called for you to do. For you see, a mission-minded person is a person who understands that mishaps comes along with our mission. See, you don't give up with every mishap. You use your mishap as a way of getting more focus to reach your mission. Notice here in the text, these ladies had come to the tomb not knowing who was going to roll the stone away, but they trusted in God enough to know that when we get there, some, some way, somehow, somebody's going to help us move the stone out of the way. And I submit to you, my sisters and brothers today, that even on this resurrection Sunday morning, the devil always tries to block God's mission. But if you keep your mind set on doing what God has called for you to do, you may not have the muscles, but if you have the mission, God will see you through. Preach Paris, let's say that. As long as you have a mission, God will give you the strength to see it through. See, as we see here, even in our text, Holy Week is now over. But Holy Week was just a portion of Jesus' mission. See, your trials and your tribulation have mishaps along the way of your mission. You remember even as we celebrated on last week that it was 55 years ago on April 4th that Dr. King gave up his life, but he did not give up his mission. Although he died with a dream, we now see it coming into fruition that God has blessed us, that now we got more black elected officials now than we ever had before in our past. So God is showing us if you remain faithful to the mission, God will see you through. Dr. King, he went to school, but he never forgot his mission. Harriet Tugman had to go through slavery, but she never forgot her mission. Malcolm X had to go through prison, but he never forgot his mission. And Jesus had to go through the grave, but he never forgot his mission. So I want you to know that I want you to always be mission-minded. Somebody say mission-minded. You've got to have a mission made up mind to do what God wants you to do. If you want to open up that you want to open up that business, you got to stay mission-minded. You want to get better grades in school, you got to be mission-minded. You want to do better with saving your money, you got to be mission-minded. You want to save so that you can go on a vacation, you got to be mission-minded. You want to get better in your health, you got to take your prescription, exercise, eat right, and, dig, and do what God has called for you to do. You've got to be mission-minded. You see here in our text that these ladies were mission-minded. 
And these ladies show us that in life, you got to remember this. I think I've shared this with you before, that in life, life does not come with a remote control. But you've got to get up to change it. Amen. Amen. Many of you can remember, even as child, children, before they had remote controls on televisions, your parents used you as a remote control. I need you to come in here, change the channel. Come in here or go in the kitchen and bring me this. We were the early ones who were understood that we were the remote control. But in life, life does not come with remote control. I know we've got Alexa, I know we've got Google, I know we've got all these things. But if you really want to change your circumstance, you've got to get up and move. You, 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 you've got to get up and move to change things in your life. These three ladies in our text show us that they were mission-minded and they got up. They didn't have excuses, but they got up and made it their mission to go and anoint the body of Jesus Christ. See, you got to make up in your mind. What is it that God has called for you to do? I don't care how many stones may be rolled in front of you. You've got to get up and change the trajectory of your life to do what God intends for you to do. See, whenever you give up, that's simply rolling a stone in your way. Whenever you let what people say about you keep you from reaching your full potential, that's a line for a stone to be rolled in your way. And even as we remember the life of Dr. King this past week, and even though we saw what took place also in Tennessee, that it was in Memphis, Tennessee on April 4th, 1968, that Dr. King gave up his life. And we must also be reminded that, that what's going on in Tennessee, we've got to stand for these young men who are standing up for justice. 27 years old, they're standing up for what is right, that we've got to celebrate them. We're always talking about how bad our youth are. But here are two young men who are showing us that our young people have potential when they are on a mission. And I say that we've got to stand up with them because it, it's Tennessee today, but could be Indiana tomorrow. We've got to stand tall and stand and fight for what we know is right. They were expelled because they dared to speak out against gun violence. And what I find amazing is that these states that are fighting, even now, abortion pills and for women, the right to choose, now that's between a woman and God. If you say you can't control people, then you shouldn't be able to control a woman's prerogative. Now, they say they're against abortion, but I submit to you that every person killed by AR-15 is somebody's child. That's an abortion. Every person mowed down by bullets in our streets is an abortion because that's somebody's child. And until we stand up and let our voices be heard that we're not going to stand for it any longer, we're still committing abortion. It's just outside of the womb. We've got to be bold enough and daring enough that Jesus has empowered us to speak truth to power. And whenever we are afraid to do it, then we have allowed for a stone to be rolled in our way. And even in Tennessee, we've got to call out corporations who are remaining silent at seeing representation being taken away from hundreds of thousands of Tennesseans. Corporations like FedEx, corporations like Perkins Restaurant, corporations like AutoZone, corporations like Dollar General that have their headquarters in Tennessee, we need to let our voices be heard that we will not stand for any injustices done to any of our people. 
I know it's tight, but it's right. One thing about Jesus, he was killed for being an insurrectionist. I know we sing the song and we tell about it was two thieves. But in reality, when you study the text, thieves were not executed by crucifixion. During this time, if you stole something, you know what they did? They cut off your hand. So you weren't killed for stealing. You were killed because you went against the government. And the reason why they killed Jesus was because he dared speak out against the corruption in the government. The reason they killed Dr. King was not because they were letting us ride on the front of the bus, not because they were letting us eat at lunch counters, but they killed Dr. King because he stood up against the war in Vietnam. I know I'm right about it. And I dare tell you that when you've been called by God, you recognize that God has given your voice an assignment to speak out for those who've been marginalized. And I say to you today that even with all of the corruption, God still has good news from the cemetery. For here in our text, Jesus has now been resurrected. The Marys are there to anoint his body. And the text says that there was a, an angel there, a young man there, adorned in white. And he says, why are you here at the grave? Jesus said that he was going to rise. And he is risen just as he said he would. See, Jesus now had been raised from the dead. And Jesus now was returning to the people who already his followers. Jesus had returned now to give instructions to those still on earth. And Jesus had returned to let them know that all power and authority had been given to him. For here in our text, we see that these people, who these ladies are, that they come to the cemetery to anoint a dead body. But what they found out is that Jesus' death certificate now had become our birth certificate. That now because he had died, now we are able to live. But not only are we able to live, but we're able to have an eternal and abundant life. That because of his death, we are now here today. But I'm so glad that all of the crosses in our church are empty because Jesus is no longer on the cross. We don't wear the crucifix because the, the God that we serve sent his son to die on the cross, but he didn't stay on the cross, didn't even stay in the grave. But the Bible lets us know that he got up with all power in his hand. And because he got up, we too now can get up because he has given us the power of resurrection. And I want you to know that the Bible is filled with those who experience good news from the cemetery. So there were people at the cemetery, and some of them were happy because Jesus was dead. They were excited at the cemetery to see Jesus had been crucified. There were those who owned vineyards. They were happy because Jesus couldn't turn water into wine. There were doctors who were happy that they would now be able to keep their patients because Jesus could no longer heal them any longer. There were ophthalmologists who were happy because Jesus had, 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 was dead and they could go back to selling glasses. And Jesus was unable to give sight to the blind. The audiologists were happy because they could keep on selling hearing aids because Jesus was not able to unstop deaf ears. I want you to know that the psychologists were happy because Jesus was not there that they could still give prescription drugs to those who were out of their mind. But because Jesus was not there, because they knew that Jesus is a mind regulator and he's a heart fixer, 
but I'm so glad to let you know that I've got good news from the cemetery. Hear ye, hear ye. I've got good news from the cemetery. For when you read in 2 Kings chapter 13 and 21, when Elijah died and the Moabites invaded the kingdom, when they killed one of God's people, they threw him in the grave. But as soon as his body touched Elijah's bones, the man came back alive. That's good news from the cemetery. Well, when you keep on reading, I still got good news from the cemetery. One day while Jesus was walking, a widow had lost her child. But Jesus touched the casket and her son came back to life. That's good news from the cemetery. Well, Mary and Martha tell you they lost their brother Lazarus. But Jesus stopped by his grave and said, Lazarus, come forth. That's good news from the cemetery. Well, I want you to know that because of Jesus is alive and well, we too ought to have good news from the cemetery. And is there anybody in Philip Temple? Somebody counted you all. Somebody didn't think you were going to make it. But you've got good news from the cemetery that I'm alive and well. Haters can keep on hating, but I'm going to thank God that I'm alive and well. And is there anybody that knows like I know that you've got good news from your cemetery? Life tried to tear you down, but God lifted you up. Uh, trials tried to tear you down, but God keep lifting you up. And I'm so glad that on this resurrection Sunday morning, we've got good news from the cemetery is that Jesus is alive and well. Aren't you glad today that buried, he carried my sins far away, but rising, he justified me, freed me forever. One day he's coming back, a, a glorious day. Good news from your cemetery. Don't let the devil win. Tell him I've got good news. I know you meant it for evil. But God will use it for good. I've got good news from the cemetery. Come on and give God all of the praise. That song says, Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from heaven and earth to show me the way. Lord, I lift your name on high. That's, that's good news. No matter how bad the situation is, the good news is that you're still alive. And if it didn't kill you, don't you kill you. Good news is that trouble won't last always. Good news is that Jesus never leaves us nor forsakes us. That's good news. As we stand today, there may be somebody who needs to come give me your hand, but give God your heart today. Lord, I lift your name on high. Come now today. We extend you that invitation to accept and accept Jesus Christ. Come on and make the devil mad. Make heaven glad. Come and join the church. Come and join the body of Christ. We're not perfect people. We're just forgiven people. Come now. Hallelujah. I'm so glad. Thank you, Lord. I'm so glad. That's you today. Come while you have a chance. Praise it. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. 
from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Hallelujah. Lord, I lift your name. Hallelujah. Come on. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord. Hallelujah. I'm so. To show the way, my debt to pay, hallelujah. your name. Come on and give God praise today. Hallelujah. As we get ready to go, um, Sister Kiki Gaither, for those uh, as we're getting ready for our Women's Day, she's asking persons to see her right after worship service to volunteer for the Dim and Den Denim and Diamonds. Amen. Fundraisers, so please see uh, Sister Keithy Gaither right after worship. Volunteers are greatly needed. Amen. I also want to continue to keep in our prayers all of those who are sick among us. We do know that God is a healer, and uh, we know that God is able to do it. And we also we want to follow you know the rule at Phillips Temple is is that whenever you have a family food gathering, the pastor is always invited. Amen. That's just. That's just that's just the rule, amen. It's just it's just the rule. So you always pastor's always invited. He can always show up, amen. But we do pray God's blessing upon each and every one of you. Uh, happy resurrection. Now forget anything. We're ready to go. Not forget anything. Don't forget that uh, this week uh, we will begin our Bible study and prayer service uh, this coming Tuesday at 12 noon. And at 6 p.m., we do invite each and every one of you to come. Amen. Let us all please stand with our praise God. <clears throat> it's so good to see Sister Cheryl Johnson. God bless you. Bless you. Below. Praise him above the heavenly host. Praise for God again for what eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and most of all, God, what our hearts have felt. God, we say thank you. Thank you, God, that with every cemetery, every bad situation, because of you, God, we still got good news. God, keep us ever mindful of the good news that you've raised your son, Jesus Christ. And God, that you will raise us, you'll lift us, you'll bless us, even now as we go throughout this week. Now unto him who's able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. And all of God's people sang in one voice, amen. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, I got good news. Oh, the Easter egg hunt, I'm sorry. The Easter egg hunt is right after worship, all right? I'm 
Say that again. Hello. Well, all those that's going to participate in the Easter egg hunt, please stay in the vestibule until I call your group. So please stay in the vestibule. Please. Well, all the children and parents that's going to help participate in the Easter egg hunt, please stay in the vestibule. And I'm ready to start. I'm ready to start. I need all the parents with the children zero through three to meet me out in the fellowship hall, in the vestibule right there. I mean to stay in the sanctuary. Okay, let me go out here. Okay, they got me. Zero to three. Excuse me. I want those zero to three. All the children, zero through three. Zero through three. I don't want no other children out here, but zero through three. Zero through three.